thank you for coming on today on to Cake Break. You're our first baker that we've had on the podcast. So you're the Hebridean baker, and I've been trying to practice pronouncing your name, Connach McLeod. Okay, Chloe, your your Hebridean passport has been rescinded immediately. That's all. Can I try? Can I try? <laughs> okay, you will do it better. Can you? Okay, I'm giving you a pretty hearty eight out of ten there. Well done. That's that was all right. Really <laughs> with the one. Um, it's it's actually it's kind of if you break it down, it's it's quite easy. So it's can like country or other rude words that we can't say in your podcast. Um, and then yoch like loch, but with a y at the start. So can yoch. Can yoch. Can yoch. Um, and don't laugh, but it's the old Gaelic word for handsome. Aww. Chloe, you I'm laugh. like, me and Jade are both Scottish, but I feel like we're from a part of Scotland that just doesn't have a decent Scottish accent. Oh, so no, I think, see, see, that's so funny because the accent you have is what I think of as Scottish. So when I, when somebody says to me, because most people in Scotland don't think I'm from Scotland. Um, actually, to the point, uh, a story. I used to, one of my bizarre jobs a long time ago was I used to um, uh, do the Scottish Cup draw on Sky Sports News. You know, the uh, number two, <laughs> Aberdeen against number six. And there used to be a lot of complaints that why why couldn't they get a Scottish person to do the Scottish Cup throw? Because they kept thinking I was like Icelandic or Norwegian or Irish or all these things, and nobody knew I was Scottish. So I, I, I sometimes get a bit um, self-conscious that of my accent not being Scottish enough in a way. That's brilliant. That reminds me of um, we like a sort of vaguely similar people getting outraged about something. We, um, our, our shop's Fisher and Donaldson, but in St. Andrews, we have a, a little shop called G.H. MacArthur and Son. And it's wow. just really because that was, the, that was, there was always a baker, G.H. Uh, MacArthur and Son. And, uh, you know, at some point over time, my granddad uh, bought it, but he decided to keep it as G.H. MacArthur and Son. So although it was exactly the same, they had the bag said G.H. MacArthur and Son and the boxes, um, actually, do you know, I think the boxes were just plain, but um, the only difference was the tickets, the price tickets in our shop had green writing and a red border, but in MacArthur's they had blue writing and a green border or something like that, but they were identical otherwise. And I, and that was one of my first jobs was working there. And I remember we ran out of fudge donuts and we had the Fisher and Donaldson shop just around the corner. So yeah. I had run round and got and filled a couple of cake boxes with fudge donuts and then I came back down and I was putting them on the counter and this woman was getting served by my colleague and she said well I won't be buying anything from you you can't even be bothered to make your own cakes and then she just before we could explain turned on our heel and walked out and we were like okay yeah it's, 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 but she obviously twin, thought that this family. other bakery was just going to uh. Fisher and Donaldson buying all the cakes and then and then trying to pawn them off as their own <laughs> But I like that plan. I like that plan. If I ever open a bakery, I'm just going to sneak around to yours in the morning, buy all your stuff, and then, you know, <laughs> I'm it off. <laughs> we suffer from, um, you know, a lot of our cakes, um, you know, we'll do tray bakes, you know, brownie and millionaire shortbread and stuff. And then we have all these markers and they get meticulously cut and the knife is cleaned between every cut. And then you have this perfect rectangle of cake and, and, and then that goes on the counter and then all day, every day, all you hear customers saying is, oh, is it handmade? Because we've gone to such so perfect. Uh huh. Because obviously like, you know, back in my granddad's generation, so to have something as good as possible meant almost hide that it's handmade. Like it's so good we have a machine that makes it, but now yes. it's, it's totally the opposite. Wow, that is cool. That is cool. I'm so excited about visiting your shop. I hope I make it so I'm on the really early ferry on Friday. I think it's 7 a.m. So I'll be getting up about 4 a.m. to drive to St. Andrews. Um, and I'm desperate to try and get there in time to pop in to the shop, to the bakery. So if you see somebody running in at one minute to five, uh, <laughs> then that'll be, that'll be me. I hope you make it. 
I'm hoping to come along on Friday. So if I do make it along, I'll bring a little box of cakes. So you can Amazing. Have some more. Thank you so, so much. Something I've been interested to know is, so Jade and I have come from, I wouldn't call myself a baker, but we're from a line of bakers. So our dad was a baker, our granddad, our great granddad. I just was really interested to know where your love of baking came from and if you've baked your whole life or if this is something new that you've taken up as like a hobby. Well, um, so where I am right now, I'm in the village of uh, Cremor, which is a wee village of about 30-ish people uh, on the Isle of Lewis. And so growing up, um, our nearest shop was 30 miles away in the town of Stornoway. And going to Stornoway was like Chloe going to Las Vegas. I mean, it was a big adventure. Like, I I'd say, like, say in the ages of say when I was five or seven or 10, that kind of thing, I'd maybe go to Stornoway twice a year, you know, would get a day off school, would go to store, you know, just a really big deal. So I think it kind of meant that if you were, there was two ways to get a treat, either homemade, you know, so either your mom or your auntie would, would make something, or we had, um, the kind of classic old school kind of mobile vans that used to come around the villages. Um, so on a Saturday, I'd be able to get a real sweetie, like an actual sweet from the from the mobile shop that came around. But most if if most of the things that we had growing up were kind of things that were made at home. And I've got this big thing that I say a lot in my kind of videos or my content about homemade is always best. And I still feel that I um, I've never I've never had a takeaway in my life because <laughs> I, I, I know people see it as a treat, but I, I just see, I don't, I, I would always prefer to make something at home. And so with the bacon, I kind of still sort of feel uh, maybe kind of like growing up with my mother and aunt making very traditional things that wasn't lots and lots of variety of, of bakes at home. It was um, duff, which is our version of Clutie Dumpling. That's the the most famous thing that is made at home and so kind of peering over the stove uh, in the kind of pa big pan seeing that that was being made and scones and, and pancakes so it was very traditional in that way and so I would say that even though I always knew how to bake those maybe five or six kind of staples over the years I've started to kind of grow the kind of repertoire a wee bit uh, of what I bake but I absolutely I've always loved bacon and I think and I'm sure you're the same the sense of when somebody tries something that you've baked and they love it it's amazing it's absolutely amazing and poor Peter my partner for the the year of planning for the cookbook and 75 recipes means you have to there's a lot of things that don't get in the book as well but he'd get home from work and he'd be like please tell me you haven't baked something today. <laughs> not another one. <laughs> not another thing. And then he was like, it's delicious, but stop baking. Stop <laughs> because obviously yeah. during lockdown, I couldn't give them to anybody else. You know, you, there was nobody else to see. So um, yes, there's definitely some extra Hebridean baker pounds. Have you had uh, to extend your kilt yet? Like, because it got that bad? <laughs> well, funny, funny you say that because um, I'm doing some filming, some quite exciting filming next week um and they asked me to wear the kilt and i know that i can't fit into my mcleod kilt <laughs> just now but luckily i have another one um from um i sang for scotland at the eurovision choir song contest a couple of years ago oh. and at the time the kilt was i i, I got the council like god oh, so big now it fits <laughs> it's not a good thing we uh i won't name any names because uh, I don't want anyone to get mad at me, but uh, I recently learned that kilt, a kilt extender was a thing that you could buy at a shop. Oh, I love that idea. You know how to purchase one. Uh, we may okay. have had a family wedding a month ago, and there may have been two sets of uh, kilt, kilt extenders, extenders. Built, bought <laughs> because of the lockdown. Uh, I was doing, I don't know about you, I was doing really well with keeping healthy during lockdown and doing exercise at home I actually was really enjoying it but when when the cookbook got involved downhill yeah it went really downhill and but people it's for work like it's it's not for fun <laughs> yeah exactly 
kind of thought about that. Like I kind of like I wonder if like like health insurance or life insurance is more expensive depending on what kind <laughs> of <laughs> you write. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you do you smoke? No. Do you drink? Mm. Uh, do you are you a baker? Yes. And the, the premium goes up by ten thousand pounds. Uh huh. Yeah. And what about you guys? When you, you were saying there, you're having a bridey, but what's your um kind of relationship with the bakes at the bakery and things I mean so I've said this on the last couple of podcasts that because we're surrounded by like cakes all day every day like my treat at home would be something like savory like cheese and oat cakes and crisps and like I have a much more savory tooth yeah uh-huh. but we I'm still sure eat cakes like we still <laughs> like I've got a Belgian biscuit today for my little treat nice um what about you jade you like to bake at home you'd probably bake the most out of all of us at home maybe i i died i'm not baked well i baked a lot at home a few weeks ago for um our cousin's wedding but but before that i haven't baked in ages but um i'm known for my cookie like my chocolate chip cookies that i bake at home they're like i don't know distilled chocolate with extra chocolate um yeah growing up for me it was always uh um I think I would get an iced cookie which I would just eat the icing off the top and then throw away the bun or uh, a gingerbread man uh, which I would gnaw the chocolate off and then throw away the gingerbread or a carrot cake which I would lick the cream cheese off and then throw away the sponge um, yeah, I think now, the first time I had carrot cake, I think I I loved it because of the the frosting on the top. It's rather so than good, isn't it? Yeah. But now I love carrot cake. Mm. Um, but I, yeah, when I started, I think it really was just the frosting that I was excited about. Yeah, I'm I'm very much a like a in the last couple of years I've gone from like chocolate cake to just a plain sponge now. That's my bag. So for me, it's it's. Uh, I very rarely would get cake out of the counter, but that's because I'm making I'm making, you know, birthday cakes and wedding cakes during the week, and then you know when you oh no I've got an off cut now and I've just got perfect fingers of uh, sponge with buttercream and jam. But today I have I got some chocolates. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, we make Belgian chocolates as well, which is. It's difficult because the office Jade's in is across the hall from a, the packing room where all the chocolates get boxed. So there's just racks and racks filled with chocolates. So if you've got a wee cup of tea, you're like, oh, maybe I'll just nip across and just pick a little uh-huh. chocolate out. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous. I mean, I if I had my way, I think if if I really could do anything, like for a cookbook, for me, my favorite thing is anything in a one pound loaf tin. I love a one pound loaf tin because it means that you can it's it's compact enough that you could eat it just the two of you <laughs> in one sitting you know it's like four very hearty slices mm-hmm. and um it, it just seems to work anything i put in half an hour later it comes out the oven perfect two pound loaf tins which i know is more traditional i have good luck and bad luck with my mm-hmm. bakes but to me, if I could, because I saw, is it an Ed Kimber? He he won the first ever Bake Off, you know, Great British Bake Off. And his books are just called One Tin, One Tin Bakes, but he does it in a kind of a three bake style. So I'd love to make one just one pound loaf, not the most, not, not the most catchy of titles for a book, but one pound <laughs> loaf, 10 bakes. That's a great idea. Uh, Everyone's got a loaf tin in their cupboard. Yeah. Yeah. And so just talking to you about carrot cakes, um, I've made a kind of few different varieties of what could go with carrot, kind of in a carrot cake. So uh, carrot and stem ginger, I really like. Um, Mm. And then somebody called this a carrot halva cake, but it was uh, just like a spiced uh, carrot cake um, with, uh, yeah, some kind of Middle Eastern spices, which was really nice. So yeah, that's carrot cake is kind of one of my staples if people are coming around. So one of my favorites. Is that in your in your book? Yeah, I've got. I think I call it carrot. The one in my book is a carrot and cardamom uh, mm-hmm. loaf. Yeah. Very nice. 
Yeah. Have you got a favorite in your new book? Like, is there one that you go back to lots? Well, I think um, just talking about kind of growing up again and um, my aunt Belak, she is 93. She lives in the next village of Maravig and talk about life goals. She's 93, her husband Mordo is 94. And I mean, if I'm as active as they are at 54, <laughs> never mind 94, I will be delighted. They are nonstop still baking and fishing and thriving and doing all the things that, you know, you would dream to be in that, in that way. And it's her um, clouty dumpling recipe that's in the book. And uh, for many years, I knew her tasted just a wee bit different. I always loved her to the best. Don't tell my other aunties, but uh, I think they know now because it's in the book. Um, but, uh, and um, I was filming for the BBC travel show during lockdown with Adi Adipitan. And they said, would you bake us maybe a traditional uh, Hebridean recipe for the show? And I was like, well, it has to be the Duff, the Clouty Dumpling. And so I went to my Aunt Bella and said, look, will you please give me your recipe and including the secret ingredient? So she did. So the fact that that's in the book with and the secret ingredient simply was a tablespoon of marmalade that went into mm. the clean And I have to say, it does, like now I've made it with and without, it does make a real difference. Um, so that's my, I would say, my favorite bake. But I've also really enjoyed kind of taking classic recipes and just giving them that wee twist, uh, Scottish or Hebridean kind of twist. Um, so uh, uh, my hot toddy shoe buns I really like. So they're like kind of whiskey, lemon and honey shoe buns, which I, that are a real treat. Yeah. Um, and I hadn't realized my, my, Publishers did say at one point, um, could we try not to have as many recipes with whiskey <laughs> or alcohol in them? I think at one point there was like three whole chapters of whiskey <laughs> and generous <laughs> things. So we managed to squeeze that into one chapter. But um, I do like kind of using what I would perceive to be Scottish flavor. So um, obviously uh, whiskey or marmalade, uh, brambles, I love using brambles in in, in things. Um, oats, which I still think are Scottish, even though they're pretty worldwide. So I do like kind of using um, those and, and and taking recipes which are familiar and just giving them that wee wee twist. Sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm surprised they got you to take whiskey out because I feel like the Americans would just love it. They would just laugh it up. I think. Oh it's yeah, I mean, and they do, and yeah, I mean, and and it does. Um, it does just add something for sure. Like when you do something with whiskey, I mean, maybe a little bit kind of unexpected. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I do. And um, we've got the distillery now in Harris, the Harris, uh, well, it's, at the moment it's just gin that they're making. Um, so it's been great kind of using Hebridean produce or products like the, it, it, in the book, you'll see a lot of Harris tweed and, uh, our landscapes and everything so it's nearly a kind of love letter to the to the islands as much as a as a cookbook which is which I'm really proud of so yeah like looking through your TikTok videos like it's just such a beautiful place like I've never been I've been to the only sort of islands I've been to are Egg and then Sky we've been to but yeah. it just looks amazing and I just wondered what it was like to be locked like on lockdown there did it was it very different being locked down on Lewis or was it just like normal times? Well, you're already think, on an island? yeah, I think to be honest with you, um, I think it's down to the, the, the individual uh, in a way to how they reacted to, to lockdown. And it didn't matter if you were in a city or an island or a village or a, or a town. I think um, some people, I mean, I, I loved lockdown. I, have to say. I've, I, I could be busy in an empty room. You know, I've always got a project or something to do or something to keep me entertained. Um, so I don't know if the location made as much of a difference as maybe just m mindset and, and well-being, you know. Um, but I, 
I would certainly say that I made the best the best of it and just enjoyed it as, as, as much as possible. But certainly it's been tough for a lot of people. And, you know, up here, because maybe our houses aren't so nearby, but we know people so well, our community is obviously very important. But, um, and that community could be young children up to, you know, elderly and making sure that they're safe but also still connected to the community has been probably the biggest challenge. Mm. And even though things are a little bit more relaxed now, it's we're still seeing situations even at our own village this week of COVID cases and gives you a fright, mm. you know, it does give you a fright. So um, I, yeah, I think it's all down to your own way. I mean, I don't know about you guys, how did you find I feel so I live in the east nook of Fife so it's like a sort of tourist place like it's right mm. on the coast and it's really lovely and I remember thinking a lot like I'm in the best I was like I just feel so lucky I'm in the best place ever to be locked down like and I felt like I got out and about in the sort of nature and surroundings more than I would have and I felt quite happy that that was like a sort of a repercussion of being locked down like you're at home all the time so yeah investigating what was around and exploring mm. did you feel that like you took a lot of videos to show people what Lewis was like is that were you out and about that much anyway or did you use it as an ex as an excuse to sort of get into a little bit a little bit of both actually and I think what I learned because um I, I'd love to tell you Chloe that this was all this big strategy from the beginning <laughs> that I knew all these amazing things were going to happen uh, peaking with getting your amazing fudge donuts, which I can't wait to bite into in a second. Um, but really, all I was, all I've been doing is just showing what I I love. Basically, the bakes I love, the landscapes, talking about garlic, talking about stories. So there wasn't. Uh, oh, I'm I'm going to show people this or do this because it was really just I'm doing this today so I want people to see it but as time went on obviously you realize what people were enjoying uh, in the content or in the videos or in the stories so you'd want to show more because we're very proud of where we're from uh, so the uh, the ability to show it off to people who maybe hadn't you know I get a lot of people saying I didn't even know what I Hebridean was and you know, I had to like look it up in the dictionary um, or I'd never heard your accent before or I, I learned about the language of Gaelic because of your videos all those things amazing yeah. to be able to, to to get I mean the reaction every day the the, the messages I, I mean I probably get around 3,000 messages a day um, and I would say with nearly without fail, they are beautiful, lovely, positive messages. Mm. And it's impossible not to reply. Like it's a big part of my life. <laughs> I feel like Santa Claus, somebody <laughs> I'm kind of writing back to kids saying, yes, I'll get to that at Christmas. But like people write the most amazing things to me. And particularly during lockdown where, as I said, some people were struggling and they would say they would watch my videos and just know that there were, you know good goodness out there or, or landscapes they wanted to see after lockdown or i challenged them to learn more about scotland or the language it's just amazing so um yeah it's been pretty humbling to be honest with you've been able to to really be able to kind of promote the islands you know the, the bacon is maybe more of a conduit in a way to making that happen uh more than anything else so it's been great you know it is lovely like being able to see something that you've done bring someone joy like I feel like growing up in a family bakery that's as soon as people know that we're from Fisher and Dawson they'll be like oh my wedding cake was from yours or my oh, favorite amazing. cake is this and it's just their face yeah. up, it's like well I didn't even make the cake like I'm <laughs> just a part of this family but it's just like it's amazing and it must be similar yeah. to that it does feel like that I was on the ferry back from Alapool to Stornoway a few weeks ago and uh, this lady, 
uh, tap me on the shoulder. Actually, she's, <laughs> uh, she saw Shoris first. Shoris is the breakout star, to be fair, of this whole thing. I'm like the the, uh, the sidekick, the best best supporting actor to Shoris the dog. Um, but she says, are you the Hebridean baker? And I was like, yeah. And she said, she says, you're the reason I'm on this ferry. She says, I've been watching your videos for a year. I'm from the south of England. I've dreamed of 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 visiting from the first video you showed and now I'm on the ferry and you're sitting here yes. and I was like I felt like I was like this is everything I've wanted to happen that somebody would watch my content and go I want to I want to explore either the landscapes or the the recipes or the, the find themselves in the storyline and so for somebody to tell me that in person was just amazing yeah. because I know I know it seems as if like getting all these messages must it's amazing but see the difference of in the last few months with the book tour and everything meeting people it's a totally different experience mm -hmm. like actually people like talking to me and saying how much they enjoy the book or the videos I don't know why the, the it, online it's as if maybe it's I know it's true but it doesn't feel as true as when somebody like really tells you in person you know um so yeah, since the book comes out, came out, it's just been, yeah, it's been amazing. Well, it's been a, just a remarkable adventure. So lucky. I think, yeah, people just respond so like well to baking in every way, like whether it's to go to a bakery and buy a cake or whether it's to bake at home for yourself or for someone else. And, you know, is it not like there's more cooking shows than any, any other type of tv show exactly. and if you go to like a hospital or any public building like and they've got a tv on it's probably showing a cooking show and um when we spoke to val mcdermott a few well months ago now she had been doing baking and making videos and she was saying she'd had a great response as well and i think it's just yeah it's like like you were saying before it's a conduit to so many things um yeah big theme of my lockdown was just people I knew sending me going look I baked this and I was like yeah good I've not baked anything <laughs> like it was such a stressful time in the in the business and in our bakery um that it was just we were just so overwhelmed here that you know the last thing I was going to do when I got home was was bake and so it was just every couple of days someone else would be like sending me something, a picture of some amazing, incredible thing that they've baked. And I would be like, you're just making me feel bad. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> but you know what was interesting you were saying er when we were talking earlier, um, w w when I started on TikTok, I mean, TikTok's an amazing thing. I mean, you can spend hours on it to scroll in. And I was in awe of the talent, particularly the bakers and, and, and chefs on it. And, um, but what I realized was, when I started, there was this kind of method of making the biggest or the most dramatic cake or doing it in the quickest time or speaking the quickest. And I sort of was like, wow, that cake is amazing, but I'm never going to, I don't need to make a seven tiered cake during lockdown. I love cake, but I'll never eat that much cake. So it was sort of, that was a bit intentional that my recipes were always recipes for two people, you know, during lockdown and ones that were with, well, for me anyway, accessible ingredients. Um, and sort of, because you know, the, the videos were a minute long, trying to make the, 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 the video slow down rather than speed up. So I wasn't trying to be fast and try and get everything in. I was just, just trying to be um, a little bit kind of slow. And, and from that, somebody asked me, do you remember the kind of, the, the craze of Huga? I remember the Danish Huga, uh, a few years ago about contentment yeah. and warmth and you know, somebody asked me if there was like a Gaelic Gaelic version of of Huga um, and there sort of is I mean there is a, a, a word blas which um, depending if you because the a has a grave in it so if you say blas it means tasty <laughs> but if you say blas it means warmth and contentment so it nearly fits in both ways and there's a lovely saying in Gaelic, Berry Blas Er Lois, which means there's a time for everything. So it's just about kind of just saying, just enjoy, enjoy the current you have. Don't always be thinking the grass mm -hmm. is greener or it'll be better next week. Just, 
just enjoy what you have. So it's a good, it was a good mentality for me to have during, uh, during lockdown, you know? Yeah, now you're making me wish I'd baked more. <laughs> well, on that note, can I try? Yeah, please have something to eat. What are you going to try? Well, I have to try the fudge donut. Fudge donut. This chest, see when I opened it, I actually nearly burst out crying. <laughs> like this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. So well, now we hope it lives up. <laughs> Have you tried one yet, or is this the first bite? No, this is the first one. Although, as I said, I'm visiting my friend Caris at the moment, and she has had hers. You might not have a, I, if you heard any, you might have thought it was like internet, like problems, but it was just Caris going, mmm, oh my <laughs> goodness, that's amazing. <laughs> so um, you keep talking while I jump in this because. Yeah, enjoy. I'll have a bit uh -huh. like Cheers. Cheers. We should come up with a word that is the word to say when you're sort of cheersing a fudge donut. Mm. Okay, that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely unbelievable. I know it's probably all over my beard now, sorry. No, I think that was, that was well worth the, <laughs> sorry, well worth the long journey from St. Andrews, all the, from Fife all the way to the Edra Hebrides. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was something we had to sort of problem solve with lockdown. You know, we were like, right, how do we get our products out there? You know, fudge donut, not the best thing for putting in an envelope and <laughs> in the post box. Um, but even on like a local level, we started doing home deliveries and we were thinking, we can't really say to someone like, buy a fudge donut and we'll deliver it to your house. It's not really economical. So, but then at the same time, we didn't want to only offer people okay buy four or five donuts because what if you live on your own you're not going to eat them so really no it was I, the... could eat four. I could eat four <laughs> yeah i mean i've i have watched don't them. underestimate, <laughs> don't underestimate. <laughs> yeah um so yeah we 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 trialed and started boxing them up and freezing them and then that's how we can then post them because then they're frozen so by the time they get to you they're still cold but also it meant for people who, who maybe live alone and they want to get a delivery, they don't have to eat four in one day. They can keep them in the freezer and just take them out one at a time. And that was a real, like when I started bringing frozen ones home, my partner every day, it would be like, you'd go into the um, the laundry room and just there would be a fledged donut on top of the freezer defrosting for later. And after sort of well, a couple of weeks of one a day, I had to really <laughs> it <in>. Well, um, <laughs> I'm not going to find out how well they freeze because... As I said, they're nearly all gone already. But that's good to know for the future, for sure, that I can <laughs> order in bulk. That's that's definitely good to know. <laughs> I'm just so happy they got there because I was just thinking, this is so much trickier than posting to Glasgow or somewhere that's just down yeah. the road. I was like, is it going to arrive? So <laughs> I was really, really happy when you text to say they were there. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed by the postal service. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get, was that, all, was that all you got with fudge donuts? No, it was certainly was not. I got lots of things. The problem is I've eaten quite a lot of them. I <laughs> ate, you, you gave me, sorry to do this. Uh, you gave me some amazing kind of ghoulish French fancies, I would call them. I've eaten That's them spooky, both. Yeah, spookies. Did that arrive all right? I was like, let's just see how this goes. Yeah. Yeah. So oh my god, one of the spooky, spooky French fancies left. Uh so I've got a wee ghoulish. <laughs> they're amazing. I love I really love them. They're so simple, but they they're just so cute. So is it so I the one I had, I can't remember what it was now. You, um, a, you must have had a frog one. Was it a frog? Yeah. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. The thing I'm intrigued by, and I nearly ate it straight away, but then I knew I had to share some things, <laughs> is it looks like a wee pork pie, but I'm assuming it's something sweet inside. It's a rhubarb tart. So that's one of our most popular cakes. So yeah, it's, it's oh a- Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Looks like a little pie, but it's got lovely- I'm sweet very excited about it. that. And it looks like a classic, well, to me, an empire biscuit, is it? Is yeah, that that's what I've got. So you call it an M. I was wondering what you would call it because you. I've seen you've made some on TikTok with. But you go with is it a jelly tot that you go with on top? Yes, I do yeah. like a jelly tot. Uh huh. 
I yeah. have to agree. So I would pick yeah, up the cherry, but it's just tradition that ours have always got cherry on top. So I have to pick yeah, it up. I'm a big, I'm a big jelly, jelly mm. top. It just means that say if you're making four and then you have like a bag of jelly tots, then you eat the jelly tots when yeah, the sure. rest of the jelly yeah. tots are left over. So that. there's a strategy, there's a strategy <laughs> in, in using the jelly tots. Yeah. Um, but when you say that, because Empire Biscuits. I sort of would like to change the name of them in a way. I know that's terrible, but it's such a classic name, I know. But there's there's some people that's a positive term. Some people it's not yeah. such a positive term. So maybe we should start a strategy of what to call. I've um, done a poll before on our social yeah. media to see what people call them. And there's even some really left field ones. I can't remember. But the main ones are, so we call them Belgian biscuits. Then Empire Biscuits, Double Biscuit, quite nice and simple. Quite a lot of people call it that. Good. German Biscuits, like there's so many different things German people biscuit, call them. Iced Biscuit. Yeah. Iced Biscuit, yeah. Yeah, I, I sort of, um, I didn't make one for the book because Peter was like, I ha we have to think of a better name. So I wish I'd called you first because <laughs> I would love to have put them in the book. <laughs> They're such it's a classic, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Like things change their name, don't they? Like something will happen and they suddenly change their name. Like I wonder if we'll ever get to the point where they're like, you can't call a fudge donut a fudge donut anymore because of the great custard war of 2000. And <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's hope not. I'm, uh, for the thing I'm shooting next week, I'm making a um, tipsy layered trifle. And I do love a quirky name to a bake. I have to say, that tickles me. So uh, is that like tipsy cake or? It's it's a trifle. Yeah. A trifle. And from what I can see, the only difference is you put the Saviardi uh, fingers in whiskey rather than cherry. Right. <laughs> and cherries, uh, sorry, um, always raspberries because it's Scottish raspberries that go into tipsy layers. So, yeah. Um, but I love, um, I think my favourite is, um, have you heard of a bride's bun? No. Oh. So um, one of my favourite cookbooks is from F. Marion McNeil. Uh, it's the 1929 Scots Kitchen. And she was from Orkney, but she made it her kind of life mission to um, look at the different... Um, kind of heritages and foods and not just food and drink but just lots of kind of traditions of Scotland and so the Scots Kitchen was probably the first um, real Scottish cookbook that came out and so the Bride's Bon is a Shetland shortbread some people call it dreaming cake as well and um, it's quite a traditional petticoat style sh shortbread but with, with caraway seeds in it um but the reason it's called bride's bon is the tradition is it's made by the mother of the bride the morning of the wedding and the mother when the when the bride comes home the mother smashes smashes it over her head <laughs> right <laughs> And it's good luck for the guests to catch a piece of the spread before it falls on the floor. And if you do, you put it under your pillow and it's really good luck. Not such good luck for the bride. You can hit over <laughs> the head with a short bread. The bride. <laughs> but, That's excellent. So I love, I love a bake with a good story. There's another one as well, um, a Scots flummery. Have you heard of that one? No, but that's a great, great name. It's a great name. Now, I hope I get this right. Um, Flora MacDonald was halfway through a Scots flummery when she got arrested for helping Bonnie Prince Charlie escape. And it's a kind of, you soak oats in water for two days to get this kind of starchiness. And then you mix that with whiskey and cream and orange zest and all these things very nice so I just hope because I write these things in the book and I just hope that there's somebody in like 
Minnesota, bringing it to the table, but telling the story as everybody's eating it. That's kind of what I hope to happen yeah. with these kind of things, you know, because I, I think the stories are great fun. So you've got to come up with a good folklore story for the fudge donut. Yeah. Yeah, there was one on our website for a bit. A friend of our brother's made made our website for us and uh, just sort of as a sort of bit of filler on the, the, there was a page just about the fudge donut. So he wrote the history of the fudge donut and about how they had a, a sword of fudge and a shield of custard and this Viking had sailed the seas with the recipe and it made no sense it was like the recipe <laughs> was, was was split into five parts and kept in 10 different locations so it was protected and it was this big long thing and um this sounds this sounds like the stories in my book um, <laughs> yeah we uh -huh. left it up we thought it was great we just left <laughs> it up <laughs> someone wrote us a letter about it saying that doesn't sound like it happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it well funny enough um a letter arrived to the house and it just said, Hebridean Baker, Cremor, Isle of Lewis. Um, so no, no real address, but obviously in my book, I write about my village and the island. And in it, the, there's no letter, but there's another envelope in the envelope written to my aunt Bellac, who I mentioned, who makes the thing. So I, I haven't seen her yet to give her the letter and I have no idea I phoned it and said it I'm hoping there's cash in it <laughs> and if there is we're sharing it but <laughs> so I have no idea who's who sent this letter um and so I've got to head over to the next village later and and we'll give my aunt the letter so <laughs> that's amazing I'm trying to think what the best named things that we've got I think Siri yeah, <laughs> I like Jade. Jade loves a sear heat. Have you heard of a sear heat? A sear heat. All right, go on. Tell me what's what's that. It's bit like so. It's it's literally just sponge and icing, but it's baked in a strip of paper. So it's a bit like a it's a bit like the shape of a tiny dundee cake. So it's just a little strip of paper that you put inside a shape, and then you you pipe your sponge mix in, or you spoon your sponge mix in, bake it. And then that comes up, it's maybe, it's maybe, I don't know what that is, an inch and a half tall, uh -huh. but the sponge will only come up a, a few mil, you know, maybe five or six mil from the top. So then when, once it's baked, you just um, heat up some icing and you just pipe that in. So it just fills up. So it's just this perfect cylinder. And then the, the story I've always been told is that it's called a searhead and it's meant to look like a bandaged head. <laughs> brilliant and that's why it's that's why it's called that and it's just one of the you know it's just good old bit of sponge <laughs> yeah bit of <laughs> nice no i do like i do like a comedy name uh to to a bake that 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 keeps me going <laughs> have you put any in your book like have you come up with any good names in there the the, the one that comes to mind so my sister-in-law shonak is half swedish half Hebridean. So her mum is Swedish and her dad is from the Isle of Harris. And she is an amazing baker and makes um, the best classic Swedish cinnamon buns. So I said to her, you know, why don't we try and make a kind of twist on a, a cinnamon bun? And uh, in Swedish, the word for good is bra. And of course, in Scots, the word for good is bra. So we made bra bra buns <laughs> in the book. And they're like a cinnamon bun, but with lingonberry jelly, uh, like lingonberry jam and um, white chocolate. Delicious. That's so that's a bra bra, a bra bra bun. <laughs> that's great. We make, we make oat cakes and um we were making them for a customer and we 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 make them really quite traditionally so they're they're pinned out by hand um so we have rolled oat bannocks um which are made with the rolled oats and they're in a I one, I was, the bannocks were the first thing i ate when the box arrived today oh yeah amazing uh -huh. so the, so they're they're round and then we we make oat cakes as well and i don't this is just something that 
I don't know if that's a traditional thing or just a Fisher and Donaldson thing that the rolled oak bannocks were round, but the oat cakes are triangular, you know, like your traditional oat cake would be. Yeah. So we pin out a, a large circle and then they usually stack, it's three or four high, and then they just with a cutter will cut that into four. And so this customer said, What do you what do you call like what do you call that? And we were like, it's just, it's just they're 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 round and they're triangle no 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 you need to he was like we'll call him fife cut and we were like okay cool and that's that's totally stuck so that's you know that's what they're sold as you know fife Mm. cut oat cakes really i think already my dream which i I, i'm only doing this because it's recording so you're gonna have to say yes to this (laughs) is um to come to your bakery and just learn from you know, amazing bakers one day and just sit in awe watching them making these amazing things. So if if you would let me do that, I would absolutely love that. We would absolutely. love that. You need to come. I've just been thinking we have, when you were talking about the old recipe book um, there, like Chloe, how many, we've got, we've got our, you know, great grandfather's handwritten recipe books and uh, And they've even got like he's some there's some things that I found where he's hand painted like he's sort of painting to show what the cake looks like it's amazing and then and then just dozens and dozens of old baking magazines you know that would go out to the industry because he was really um really talented at making uh, Mars pan fruit so he used to compete so he's in quite a lot of them and had, I think he had his own little column at one point. So obviously they all had random recipes in it that'd be like recipe of the month or whatever. So there's, oh, cool. you know, we've leafed through them and stuff, but there's so many, I imagine, you know, it's the kind of thing that you might pick up on and be like, you know, like, you know, if, if you're, if you're so inclined where we where I'm not inclined to just go home and bake. There's some that you might be like, oh, that sounds so random, you know, <laughs> yeah. they're probably from a time where it was like, you know, there'll be ones from when you couldn't get certain things. So it's like, here's our workaround because we, you know. I love making that. do. Yeah, I'm very into making do. The competition thing, I'm a bit sensitive to that at the moment because um, I I did quite recently enter a competition. Is this, this, uh, por- is this the porridge competition? Yeah. Oh. World what a farce though. <laughs> I read about that. How can you? How can you be the? I mean, no offense. What the what the winner made looked great, but the World Porridge Making Championships. I mean, it's it is online. No, it, yeah, this year it was online. Yeah. Um, so the idea is that for those folk who are listening who don't know what the World Porridge Making Championships are, usually it's in Carbridge in the Highlands where you it's it, there's two competitions. One is porridge. You get porridge oats water and salt and somebody's is the best then the second competition is you get oats but you can do anything in the world with the oats Uh, so this year because of covid they did it online and so they didn't do the first competition because that would be not so fun online here's my pottage water and salt you know um but they did this they did this one and i've 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 obviously seen this kind of world porridge making championships, the golden spurtle over the years. And I was quite intrigued by it. And so I decided to enter this year and took it really seriously. Like I really was trying to think, what should I make? Because last year, the winner won with an oat croque and bouche. You know, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. How? <laughs> well, I think it was just oat flour because you really, I mean... Yeah, you don't have to use so, but I thought, oh, no, that's I want quite to loose. Use. That's quite it loose. It is a wee bit loose. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, no, I need to use it in a couple of different ways. So I chose um, baked, a classic baked Alaska, you know, you know, old school, but made it a baked oat Alaska. So I made an oat sponge. Well, I have my kind of honey, honey oat raspberry sponge so I made that as the base and then I made ice cream but then made a pinhead oat brittle in the for the ice cream really nice Um, and then the classic kind of meringue on top but oh my goodness like a lot of work and when you're filming as well 
and put in an ice cream in the oven. <laughs> you can't take it twice, like literally, like you've got to do this. And that's the end of it. So I was kind of proud, but the way they do it is the, there's like thousands of entries, like it's a big deal. Um, but they announce the top 10 in reverse order on one day. So they start at 10 a.m. And every 30 minutes, they announce in 10th place, in 9th place, in 8th place. And so, um, I, so I'm sitting eagerly going 10th. Okay, I wasn't 10th. But then wasn't 9th, wasn't 8th. When I got to 6th, I was like, oh. Because you don't know if you're going to be in the top 10. Right. So I was like, oh, wow. Well. So I kind of switched it off then. But then... Kind of switched it back on at about third because <laughs> I was too noisy. Then I was like, oh, I still haven't been called. Oh, well. And that's when I was like, what have I won? So it's a bit like, you know, when you win, when you get a lottery ticket, you automatically assume you've won the lottery and you spend the whole walk or drive home deciding how you're spending the 168 million. So I was a bit like, that. I was like, oh my goodness, what have I won? Uh, I came second, which I should be super proud of. And I am, but I think if I'd come 10th, I would have been happier because then I was so far away from first, being so close to first. I'm like, damn it. Pardon my French. I was like, I wanted to win so bad. Um, and uh, the lady who won from the Netherlands made a mushroom arancini. Is that how you say it? You know, the kind of classic risotto balls. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So very simple. And that's the thing. It's a bit like the Eurovision Song Contest. You never know if it's a piano ballad that wins or, uh, you know, one with somersaults and fireworks. Yeah. I went somersaults and fireworks and the piano ballad one. So that's <laughs> that's life. So you're going to spend the next 365 days planning. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Basically, I'm like now completely obsessed, but it's been, but even coming second, like the, like I've been on Good Morning Australia, um, I was on the Canadian News, um, BBC, Sky News, like, <laughs> because I think I was the only Scottish person in the top 10. Right. So suddenly now I'm mm -hmm. Scott, every kept asking. in Scotland. Yeah, people keep saying, shouldn't the top 10 all be Scottish people? So I was having to kind of like justify Scotland's position in the potted world, which I never thought that would be my role in life. But you go, no, 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 we're really good at making porridge. You eat porridge every day for breakfast, I, right? I, no, I do, though. I, do you? Okay. I, if I could eat porridge three times a day, maybe a fudge donut in, in the afternoon as well, but I would, I am obsessed with porridge. And e even in my uh, cookbook that is I've started to make savory oats as well oh yeah and I love that it's like a really that's my favorite like lunchtime treat just to make savory oats so yeah I am a wee bit obsessed with oats so well you'll definitely need to come and visit then because we all the oats that we use are grown in Fife ah so amazing. that was a big deal for us when we were able to command you know able to consume enough oats that we could actually get a mill to <laughs> mill and them I think it's like Amazing. 90 tons a year or something that we go through because yeah it's we just so much many oats. Do, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's just all for your order <laughs> that, was, yeah, that was me yeah uh -huh. um yeah I, I i love oats and it actually from it as well i just did some filming with serbian television honestly every day of my life is bonkers and they called me the Scotland's most Scottish Scotsman. <laughs> that was their thing. Which I was yeah, like, that's, that's amazing. I was like, wow. <laughs> um, and it was, they said it's Serbians, Serbia's most two famous comedians. And I was like, to be fair, I don't know many other Serbian comedians. So you could just yeah um they came over and filmed like me in scotland so i had had to put on the kill i showed them how to put kilts on um we i taught them gaelic i showed them how to make whiskey ice cream so it was very <laughs> very classic scotland but uh yes but i like being called the most scottish scottish man in scotland that was fun that's <laughs> nice. yeah that's like your tagline now Love it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and what's it like on the island are you 
are people loving the fact that you're like putting Lewis on the map? Like, how's the reaction been? It's amazing. It's amazing because um, you never know how people will react to to success or or whatever whatever's happened kind of thing. And uh, but just the, the the support and feedback is just unbelievable and when I'm doing my book tour and I've done a couple of book signings on the islands and there's people coming in ordered it like getting 10 books 15 books and like going everybody is getting one for Christmas and I've got this real fear that there's this auntie in Toronto who is going to get 12 copies of the Hebridean Baker cookbook from all her nieces and nephews. And she's going like, go, who's this damn Hebridean Baker? Um, <laughs> because everybody's going, oh, I'll get that for Auntie Morag in Toronto. She'll love it. But everybody's got the same idea. But um, the, the support has just been amazing. And everywhere I go, people just shout. As I said, most people recognize Shoras first. Shoris is the first person to recognize. Then, not today, but I did bring it with me just in case. Then the fatty hat, because I'm now stuck with the fatty hat. Now I've got a fatty kid, cat instead. I was going to say, I wonder if anyone's going to tune in and be like, who is this imposter? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. Like genuinely amazing. Like, and all age groups. I was driving through a village one couple of days ago and these kids started running running towards the road, like waving, shouting Hebridean Baker. And um, then old grannies and it's just, I, I can't, but like genuinely, it's like every day something happens that I just, it just kind of pinch me kind of things that happen. And it's just, it's just amazing, like really amazing, so. Like the whole, it's just so like wholesome and lovely. Like just, you're just sharing nice things about your life, like where you are and what you enjoy doing. Like it, it makes total sense that it's been popular. Do I people expect so. you to bring cakes like everywhere you go now though? That's what we get. Like we can't really go anywhere like without taking the red box. Like do people, are they a bit kind of like, oh, <laughs> not brought anything. Well, now, now that you said that now i'm thinking maybe they are like maybe when i go somewhere and i have and i'm like oh my goodness what are they all saying but i um i was visiting there's um a, a couple who are visiting from america uh in the village at the moment and so this morning i was popping over to see them and i was like oh my goodness i haven't made anything at all so um i had already opened the of bannocks and I was like oh, that'd be fine if I if it's open <laughs> you had to check you had to check them first I had to check them first yeah. so so I went around and we ate them we, we ate the whole packet <laughs> this morning amazing what did you so, have with them did you just what did you put on top just plain or butter or so I I had butter on mine they wanted to eat them plain first to try them just kind of plain because they hadn't had them before and then they had them they had both they had them with butter as well so yeah they were great so your your bannocks have been tasted by hebrideans and americans already uh today in I the like islands i like i'm glad they've got the seal of approval from the most scottish what was it the most, <laughs> the most scotland's scottish, most scottish scotland. <laughs> i'm gonna put that on a poster i'm so excited yeah it's brilliant like that's fun the oat cakes thing is funny because lots of people just imagine an oat cake is what you can get in the supermarket like they lots of people if they've not bought oat cakes in a traditional baker or they've not had like a granny or someone make them properly they think that they're just these like very smooth cardboardy smooth. type of things yeah, and they're so different when i see them those ones yeah. that are packed perfectly in plastic yeah, and they're yes. not right they're, they're as you could use them as a protractor like they're so yeah. square you're like that isn't right yeah yeah you're, you're totally right you're absolutely right and the way i i mean it's instant as well how how people eat them you know like what what, what you know remember the cream egg thing how do you eat yours it's the same with oat cakes i love oat cakes with soup now i would never think of having bread with soup i would always have uh oat cakes with soup that's just my 
kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, it's also just the way people eat different things as well. Clutie dumplings is another example of that, where um, some people eat clutie dumpling or duff as we call it as a pudding, you know, like slice it, have it with custard. But we fry it with in bacon fat and have it as breakfast. Um, so <laughs> that sounds brilliant. It is I amazing. Get on board with that, like. <laughs> Any way to involve something that's seen as a cake or a treat as breakfast, I think is brilliant. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it's interesting how people, different people use, you know, different things in different ways for sure. So, yeah. And do you do, do you do a lot of savory baking as well or like cooking or is it, is it all about? Yeah, I mean, I do love cooking, but again, it's very traditional. I mean, I'm lucky my brother still have, um, uh, their croft so they kind of they've got a sheep in the croft so I get a lot of mutton uh, not so much we don't really eat lamb on the island because the lambs aren't big enough to 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 slaughter here but um, we eat mutton a lot so a lot of pretty much even in the height of summer if you come to my house it's still slow cooked casserole lamb ca uh, kind of mutton casseroles or beef cheeks anything i can slow cook for 12 hours uh is, is exactly what i love so um I, I probably wouldn't be the best person to to live in malibu and and invite people over for a summer recipe but if it's a winter's night then you'll get a very cozy cozy meal from us for sure i was gonna that. say we in our cafes we serve the stovies with oak, we serve stovies with oat cakes um and one of my favorite things is hearing visitors say what's a stovie <laughs> and then sort of having to politely explain you can't get a stovie that doesn't that's not a thing. but the best <laughs> stovies um i've ever had were ones that uh, we made at home and it was with lamb and they were just i still think about them <laughs> yeah 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 i do uh, it's interesting that again with lamb and mutton mutton's a lot of people think they don't like or they, there's maybe a bit of snobbery around mutton and I, I think it's so flavoursome and it's kind of our staple staple kind of meat here um, which so yeah so a lot of mutton fish I mean again growing up the things that seem very extravagant to some people for us was very normal because my father was a fisherman so it would be like oh we're not having lobster again I you know <laughs> <laughs> do we have to have salmon can we not have <laughs> bird's eye potato waffles something like that so uh, so you know now when i see people going oh, i've made like i'll visit somebody and they've made lobster and i'm like oh <laughs> but for them it's <laughs> we're just having lobster all right oh, okay uh, <laughs> so it's amazing again what is what's normal for some people and not for others kind of thing because lobsters and prawns and fresh fish and the best meat has always been so normal for us, but uh, yeah, maybe we're a bit spoiled. Well, that's um, like our childhood. It's like people like come into our bakeries and look at the counter and they're like, whoa, look at that. And we're just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, you know, when I've worked in an office and someone will come in with the box of cakes that it's like, oh no, I'm all right. <laughs> just, it's not like this huge treat thing. Cause yeah, as you say, you just, it was just, around you all the time it was just normal like absolutely as a child. yeah yeah cat I mean, has sat there so well the whole time i'm impressed <laughs> she looks like chloe's cat but she does um sure is going to be furious that he hasn't been involved um this is <laughs> that i've replaced him with a cat <laughs> i know of, of, like of oh, all sure. of all of the creatures <laughs> He'd be like, this Hebridean baker usually has a hat and usually has a dog. Exactly. What is going on? It's the, <laughs> evil, like. the evil twin. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. It's been lovely to chat to you. Yeah, we'll been, hopefully catch yeah. you in St. Andrews on your book tour. And we would love for you to come over to the bakery at some point. And I would you can look through our recipe books and you can have a shot of pinning oat cakes. It would be amazing. Well, firstly, I think my uh the post delivery this morning is my favorite ever 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 box to arrive like i've never even on christmas day never experienced the excitement of opening a, a gift box like that before so thank you for so many amazing treats that have been 
feeding the village <laughs> today. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to be in St. Andrews this weekend and uh, hopefully catch up. So as I said, if you see a madman running in a one minute to five off the off the Ullapool ferry. <laughs> we'll in the shop, we'll let them know. <laughs> <laughs> Great, but thanks guys so much. It's been really thank fun to catch too. up. Cheers. Thank you. See you later. Bye.